He has been staying. What up. are we? T- what are we talking about today? We. What are we talking about today? We're talking about the exciting world of uh, negotiating with you know buyers and and I think that's what it was negotiating buyers concessions and buyer broker fees. Yeah, negotiating concessions oh. and buyer broker fees. Cool. That's I had a. Gr- I wanted to get the video. I can't get it. I wish I could have it. I got to repost it out on my Instagram. It's like, uh, well, the quote was, it was a classic. It was, uh, give me one second here. One second. This thing is so great. I was like, I'm using this mm-hmm. line. It is so great. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I was like, it is. The, the, hey, Dave, it looks like you got my name somehow. I don't know how that's going on. Hey, here you go. <laughs> this line was so great what I saw on this thing. I was like, oh my God. I wish I had I wish I could do see more of it. It was something like, why do I need a buyer agent? I can I I can do this myself. And then the response was, it's like trying to clap your hands with one hand. And then the guy reaches out and smacks the guy in the face. <laughs> it was a classic. I was like, Exactly. It's like how do you know how do you open a jar with one arm? It's not easy. We know what we're doing. You've got to show value, and that's that's the killer of what we're talking about. You know, it's like trying to hit a golf ball without a club. In Maddie's case, it's me surfing without a surfboard. It shouldn't be surfing. You know, it's it's you surfing on a shortboard, a little board. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's like Lawson uh, sitting on off with a the putter. <laughs> there you go, there you go. All right, all right. Should we get started, guys? Yeah. Let's so do the topic it. Of today is, I guess, Cam. You want to run this thing? Who's going? Who wants to run it? Cam, we got a fun it. thing at the end. By the way, Cam's a good, Cam's a good MC. We have to save five minutes for something fun at the end, and we're going to come up with a question. And I got it, unless somebody else has got a fun one. So. All right, I like. I just like. I just like hearing about your holiday plans, Lurch, because you have the best. I want to. I want to. I want to be with you on a Labor Day or Memorial Day because your your holidays sound way better than mine. So I can say. (laughs) Anyway, let's let's, so let's let's get started, Cameron. All right, let's get going, you guys. Hey, it's good to see everyone. Um, Hope everyone's been having just a rock star week. It's been it's been busy down here in Florida. So I hope everyone else is staying busy. Um, today we are going over, give me the topic real quick, guys, just so I don't mispronounce it. I know it's about buyer representation, but give me the buyer, actual topic. Negotiating buyer concessions. I think it's getting, you know, buyer agreements signed, explaining them to buyers. And then I think explaining them, which is a critical part, you know, having that conversation when you submit an offer with the listing agent so that the listing agent knows how to present the fact that you're asking for whatever it is, a 3% concession from the seller to the buyer, you know, why that is. And because otherwise you get these ridiculous responses where they say, oh yeah, they said they would pay you 1%. It's like, wait a minute. That's, so. so this is a great topic. I, this, and that's what I thought it was today is kind of that going over the, the, the buyer broker with your client, plus explaining that to the agent, right? And how to get them on your side. So that's the part that I think a lot of agents are maybe a little unsure of right now is how do we present this request for the seller to give concessions that ends up paying us and still feel like we're working together and not biting each other, right? So I'm excited to talk about this. We actually just put a property under contract uh, two days ago, and it was that exact situation where they were offering a lot less. And the agent didn't even Cameron, know about what was Cameron, going on. I so, want to give a caveat first. While we're on, we're going to go to you first, Craig. Actually, no, no, you no, go no, on no first? you're not going to me. I want to do a caveat here. <laughs> Everybody, commissions are negotiable. We're not suggesting anything. This is not an antitrust. This is just an open conversation. None of us can get in trouble. It's not mixed by the NAR. It's not mixed by the MLS. It's not mixed by any company. It's not mixed by anybody. This is open generalities of what we do in our business. Now that everybody's covered, including Kentucky Fried Chicken, yeah. go, Cam. <laughs> hey, no, and that's a good, um, I guess that's good, right? It's good to always let everyone know what the actual legalities are now because that has been a topic or a uh, area of concern forever, right? Everyone has always been concerned about what they were. And, and now with this, they've blown this out of the water. They've opened this up for us to be able to openly negotiate it, which which I'm excited about. And hopefully you guys are too. After going through this class today, I know for a fact that everyone in this call and everybody that watches the recording 
are going to have great tools and a great uh, kind of an overview and an objective on how they can approach conversations with their clients and conversations with the other agent, which right now I'm finding is actually a little more challenging because the other agents aren't really sure what's going on, right? So Craig, I do want to start with you. I do want to start with you because you're always on fire. I want to hear like, like we're talking about. What is it that you're talking with your buyers for the agreement? And then how are you presenting those offers to the selling agent so that you guys can work together, collaborate, and then get the thing put together? I think, again, it comes from how your relationships are with the agent. And that's the beginning. Um, when I'm going to show properties, I've always called them. I'm starting to call them. I'm just saying, and you're building the rapport there. Um, is your seller offering a concession or for buyers to representing uh, buyer agents? And they're going to say yes or no or whatever it might be. A lot of them are throwing out a, a, a number. And that number seems to be somewhat in the range where we all used to be before, which is comfortable. Because remember, some companies are doing the, the pass-through on the buyer and some are still doing a buyer agency for now. But they only have a small window to do that until they totally have to rip the Band-Aid off and do it the way EXP is doing it. So, but Craig, is your, does your lit, sorry to interrupt you, but really quickly, because I know you're in Pennsylvania and a lot of us are not. Uh, does your listing agreement have still have something on there saying how much of a concession or if a sellers, what does it have a number for offering out a buyer concession? Number one and number two, uh, or does it just have a yes or no about the concession or does it, or what is it? The MLS the just says yes or no, but in our MLS, you can't mention anything, no description, no paperwork, right. no nothing about but that. But what about your listing agreement? The list agreement just has the a listing yes or no question on concession. Car has one. I've been using the one with the XP, even though it's not self-filling. You got to type it in and do all that stuff. It's, it, it is a little more work, but I've been using that one because I know that it's, it, it, it doesn't have it in it and it solves it right but away. The car, and the car form the car, or yeah. the NAR for whatever form you're talking it about. Doesn't. Also has no uh, no mention of of concession to except it says yes or that no. is the seller willing to concession to yeah. a buyer agent, but not an amount. Um, I believe I, I believe I'd have to. I'll look at that again, but I, I believe it is. I've been I haven't been looking at it because I'm trying not to use it. I'm trying yeah. to use the forms that EXP has said to use, even though that you know they're not, they're they're all generic. They're all good, and it seems to be working well. Going back, but my to understanding. Buyer, Right. And, and and sorry to jump in here, but from my understanding, Matt, none of the new listing agreements should have a place to put a co-broke amount. It should only Correct. be if there is available a yes, yes concession or no. or no concession. Now, I'm not I'm not a legal expert. Again, this is just prefacing it. But from my understanding, there should not be listing agreements that people are still filling out that have a spot to put a amount or a percentage. And if you are, make sure that you're using the right forms because you might be using forms from beforehand. Correct. Right. Exactly. But see, that's saying seller concession. It's automatically denoted. Yeah. Which is what. But the, what that's my point. Is what's the point of call, if if it's yes or no on the MLS? I I don't understand what the point of calling a listing agent and saying how much are they offering out? Because when people call me on my listings now, I say whatever. Who knows? Like whatever you're at, whatever you negotiate. There's no amount. You know yeah. what I mean? But some so, of the anyway, listings in the past had them, but. Yeah. Again, this is just going through it. I'm trying to get a feel for the agents because a lot of them have diarrhea them out. They're just throwing things up at you, saying, oh, yeah, my seller do whatever. So I'm feeling it out of where it's at. But where I'm dealing, where, where I'm working with the buyer, and we're, that's where we're talking about the how do we show our value, is that the first thing I'm asking is, when was the last time you bought a house? And when was the last time you went through the process from point A to point Z? Because the world's changed. Well, I've had I've talked to a bunch of other realtors and and none of them have said I should do that. So that's great. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into a surgery with a doctor and not get told what the surgery is going to be about. Well, you're not a doctor. Well, that's great. Then go work with one of them. Why are you calling me? You got to be willing to say no. You got to be willing to show your value and you've got to have a setup for it. You can do it on a we're actually working through it um, on putting on a PowerPoint that we can send to somebody to do on a Zoom. We can send it to somebody, go through it. It can be a video we're also working on that we just send it. Look, here's a briefness where we can meet face to face. At least it's getting an idea of showing value where nobody else is. Number two is that your experience or your team's experience is going to give you the value that you're going to be able to go at. 
Remember, now that there's opportunity, there are some people that don't want the property on the MLS where we used to have to put it on the MLS. Now, all of a sudden, we're in a different playing field, which is great. So you're saying is you don't want to be involved with my off-market price properties, just like Dave Lawson has said, Cameron. We have multiple different places and spaces that hunt now where they used to, all the buyers were just like, oh, we have the MLS and you guys control too much. No, now I actually am very comfortable saying the control's back to us. We have the information. It's a matter of how much information we give them without being paid for it. And be point blank. Say, guys, I'm not on a salary. I don't get paid a salary. I have time and I have value. That's all I have. I have time to give you and information and, and success I've had in the past. I can't replace that time. So I have to get paid somewhere. And that seems to be working great. I'm not having a challenge with it. Every buyer saying, yeah, I understand it. I'm glad to hear you're on my side. And yes, we can negotiate that into the contract. And we're not having a problem. And my numbers are actually higher than where they were before. I'm asking for higher and I'm willing to go down late, late, later if I have to in a contract. But the buyers are concessioning to higher. So yeah, I'm very here. comfortable with that. You're doing the same thing, Cam. You're seeing same here. Thing. All the buyers I put under contract, they were above what the homes were previously co-broked in the MLS for. We were getting paid more, guys. You just got to work for it a little, and that's that's the exciting part. So, Craig, that was good stuff. And you know, I love you. Like you are always spicy this morning. I liked it with the whole, you know, go work with the the cheap doctor because that's really the truth, you guys. Is sometimes you have to have that firm foot down and say, I provide more value. I'm better. You want to work with me, but if you want the cheap guy go experience that first and then come back when it doesn't work out. So good stuff. Good stuff. Um, one thing I can say, cause Matt, this is kind of that discussion real fast is why call the, the listing agents beforehand and just ask them if they're offering concessions. Cause right now we can negotiate. We can always ask for concessions, no matter if they are or they're not right. I will say the advantage, if you're not doing 10, 15, 20 showings, you're doing two or three is you can build some of that rapport, right? You can maybe, you know, tell them how good their house looks and make them feel good and hope that you can maybe start building it on your side. You can listen to them tell you too much because I think that's a famous thing with agents. I mean, I've always asked questions that are hard questions and you amaze what the what agents will just blatantly tell you. Like they just discuss everything. So I think there's some advantages there. I do think though for a lot of us uh, and especially for our team members that are out there with two or three clients or maybe they're doing two clients in a day, um, they don't have the time, in my opinion, to be calling every single agent. That's okay too, you guys. You got to make sure that you know you're you're working and you're using your time efficiently. But that's the great great answer, Craig, is that you are reaching out to them first. You're you're getting some of that information up front, and you know that's the part of this panel that's really exciting. Is sometimes we're all doing it a little differently. So, um, yeah, I want to go to our next. Boy, it's busy today. Like I said, you guys want to go over to uh, Gary Mesa. I'm so glad that you're on, Gary. It's good to see you. Talk to us what you're seeing here with the agreements and then with when you're presenting offers and you're kind of negotiating that. Are you having to train the other agents or is that going good for you? Give us your your experience right now. Yeah, no, thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> um, so personally, I haven't had the pleasure of submitting an offer yet. Like I've been working through a lot of my listings, but through our team, um, you know, I've been what I've been seeing is just a lot of pushback from, you know, from the, the buyers, like, especially with buyers that have been, you know, we've been working with for some time and now things have changed, you know? And so try like the question keeps persisting. Well, why do I need to sign this now? Why do I need, you know, why, why has this changed? It's not really our, you know, this isn't something we're forcing you to do. This is really like, you know, the regulations that we have to abide by. And here's why. So I found that we've been having to explain, you know, explain things more than one time to really help them understand, um, you know, getting that initial, you know, consultation and sitting people down has been really important to really help them a see the professionalism, you know, that we're that we're offering and just slowing them down a little bit because if you can't keep their attention, like if, you know, we used to meet them at a house, show a couple of properties and trying to have those deeper conversations as they're trying to digest the home or the kids are running around or whatever the case, and you can't keep their attention, there's no way you're going to get through it. But by kind of forcing them to sit down and go through it is, has been helping, you know, uh, we've set several, you know, consultations with buyers from our online lead gen, from open house leads, et cetera. 
Um, and so that part seems to be, you know, seems to be working, but it is a struggle, right? Like we have to work for it a little bit more and it is frustrating, you know what I mean? But I think as agents, we have to, you know, open our minds to like, you know, put the shoe on the other foot. Like it's a little frustrating for the buyers because it's been done differently before, right? Like we've all heard my cousin's uncle's brother, whatever, got a 2% mortgage and like, why can't I do that? You know, it's like, Hey, times have changed. And although that was several years ago, it's just getting them in the mindset and they're confused. Like they're not, you know, the, the buyers in the market don't experience it every day like us. So we have to be patient, right? We have to walk through it with them multiple times. And the question has also come up like, well, you know, when we're talking about single, you know, the single property showings versus the, versus the long-term uh, representation agreement. And why would I pay you? Like, what if we find our first home, you know, offer on the first home that you show me? Like, why would I pay you, you know, two and a half percent or 3% or 5% or whatever that is, because you've only shown me one home and you kind of alluded to it before. And Craig was talking about it, but realistically, that's, that's what we're selling is, you know, and where our value is, is our experience. Like, you know, many of us have been here five, 10, 15, 20 years or more, even one to two years, but it's, again, it's what we've learned and what we've gone through of how to help those buyers get through a transaction. Like, Okay, you want to approach it on your own. What happens if you run into a situation that you should have, you know, dug into a little bit more? A sewer, uh, you know, whatever, like a roof. Like, how do you get through those hurdles that you don't know that you're going to encounter until you get there? And that's when the experience counts. And do you want to be going at that alone? A to kind of walk away from a property that could have been a, uh, you know, a good deal and getting through that easy enough, right? or they're going to over, they're going to complicate it and back out because they don't understand it. So it's really our experience, just like, you know, you know, an attorney or a doctor, you're going to want to go to that experienced doctor. Cause when something goes wrong, you want their experience to kind of help to help you through it. And that's really what we're, what we're selling. I've been in real estate for 17 years. I've sold over, you know, 500 properties and believe me, like 95% of them have been, uh, you know, twists and turns and they haven't been easy. Right. But I've learned from that to help my clients through that's that's what we're selling. That's the value that we're bringing amongst all the other activity stuff. So I think it's important to really nail down those conversations and be ready for those hard questions and, and how to deliver it. Because again, I don't know about you guys, but I'm really not interested in, in doing a single property showing and, and working and giving them all of my value to have them bounce out to another agent because they just don't understand it. And pretty soon, I, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic that within the next 30, 60, 90 days, all of these buyers that are questioning it will have been told this by many other agents. And so it will become more of the norm. But right now, I feel like we're all kind of struggling through it in a, in a way, even with the clients that already believe in us, you know, so uh, just be patient and make sure to, to just go through the steps the right way. Don't shortcut it. Good stuff, Gary. Good stuff. And it's great to hear multiple perspectives because you know like you're saying you're feeling like buyers are confused the agents are confused and you're having to really explain to them why they need this and why it's beneficial to them that goes back if you guys missed last was it last week or the week before with our usps we had a just a killer episode with usps and that really is showing your value there to your buyers on why they want to work with you and um that's great stuff and you also brought up the short or the single property agreements versus the longer term buyer broker agreements and that's fun too because i see i see uh, ross down there smiling as they are actually using the single property agreements to a lot of success so i'm going to jump down to you ross i want you to kind of break that down because we're getting so many good perspectives right now that no matter what you're doing, no matter if you're a big team, small team, single agent, you can use this stuff. Take it off, Ross. Totally cool. Thanks. You're doing awesome, Cam. You rock. Uh, I'm glad to be on with you guys. Hey, everybody. Uh, we, we are not using single property, but we are using what's called a tour agreement. Um, I feel like that's been working really well for us. So just quickly, a touring agreement is a non-exclusive. Um, it does address it. For, for California regulations, it has to address uh, compensation on it, but we're leaving that blank and saving that presentation for uh, after the showing. So I don't want to talk to anybody about money. This is just my, uh, I think you guys are buyer consultations. Like those are all excellent practices. Our lead platform is a little different. So we're meeting people at properties, uh, not setting up appointments to meet beforehand. So the touring agreement gets us in the door, keeps us compliant. Um, for me, when I'm meeting someone that's ready to look at properties, 
the last thing I want to ask him is like, how much money you make? Uh, you know, like I don't need to ask those prime questions because I don't want to turn them off on wanting to see our genuinity and wanting to give them the best service. So sometimes we miss, but um, in general, people are more apt to sign that buyer representation agreement with us because our focus is on them and not on the commission we're going to make or the concessions we're going to be requesting. And when a buyer truly feels that, they're like, I have no problem signing this representation agreement with you because I have a good feeling about you, right? Because the good feeling they're feeling is more attention on them, not on trying to get them to sign a document that's going to make sure we get paid. And if we can really focus in on that customer experience, our customer is going to go to bat for us to get the commission during the transaction. When it comes to requesting it, uh, lately, like I've been writing on homes and the listing agent, mostly from out of town, will let me know, hey, uh, seller's offering a 2%. I don't even address when they say 2%. Just like, okay, cool. Well, offer will be coming over. Um, and I'm requesting 3%. How many offers do you have on the table? Oh, none. That's cool. Um, here's a full price offer with a 3% concession. Um, what, what's the hot button? Oh, well, their number is their number. How many other people are giving them their number? Zero. It's the number and it's a 3% concession. Are your sellers going to sign it? Uh, well, we, you know, we have a lot of showings. How many people have written an offer? You have, you are in control when you are requesting your commission, especially in today's market, be in the driver's seat. Do not take the passenger seat. Do not take orders. You're the, you're the expert. You are the consultant. You are in control. And don't give that away. Be just because a listing agent did a crummy job on negotiating their commission up front does not mean we have to do a crummy job on getting concession um, so that our buyer's fee is covered and they don't have to worry about coming out of pocket to make sure they're getting the best professional experience. And that's what we're going to give them. So I don't address it beforehand. I don't need a number up front. I know what I'm going to be asking for. I know what my buyers expect for me to get paid. And I think the biggest word that I've been using and getting buyers to come to my, uh, you know, to have my back essentially when it comes to the concession is transparency. So when I'm explaining the, uh, the buyer broker agreement, I can, I don't pin it on. Well, we have to sign this because it's legal. It's like, no, NAR, uh, and National Association of Realtors had a settlement that was based on the transparency. So it's not a mystery of what your representation is getting paid any longer. You used to be on the buyer side. The buyers just knew the sellers were paying them something. It could be 0%. It could be 3%. It could be wh whatever it is. They don't understand it. They're not feeling it. They don't know. But here I'm letting you know that I'm going to be asking for 3%. That is market standard. I can't negotiate up from there, but I can negotiate down to make sure that your real estate dreams are attained. And I'm not going to let my concessions stand in the way of you reaching your goals. And if you can throw out a non-threatening presentation like that based on customer service and experience, nobody's going to have a hesitation. It's when we make it awkward and be like, Ugh. so if you don't sign this, you can't buy a house. You know, it's like, oh, well, that's when they start asking the hard questions. If we're just able to be non-threatening and give that awesome customer experience, that's when your client's going to have your back. You can request your full pop with the listing agent, no matter what expectation they're trying to set or they've set with their seller. And when you get that good offer in um, and you're promising them, I'm going to get you the best price, best terms, save money on your closing costs and your loan rate. Um, I think that's when you can find the most success, but I think just to restate, you don't have to address it up front with the listing agent. You don't have to ask. You know what you're going to request going in. But uh, if somebody offers you 2.5% up front, cool. That sounds awesome. I know I'm going to get 2.5%, but here's my 3% concession request. And, uh, and go from there. Because I think sellers in today's market, they don't care about half a point if they're going to get a strong deal from a strong agent with a strong buyer. So that's, that's how I'm, I'm operating today. You're on mute, dude. And now you're on mute, hey, Cameron. Good stuff, Ross. Good stuff. No, <laughs> listen, guys, this is, 
just as you said there is you're not having to address it up front you're using the tour agreements you're doing it a little bit differently than some of us but you're still having a lot of success and and listen is we are in the driver's seat now we are able to ask openly for what we want and we can negotiate that that's up to us obviously that depends on what we can get but for example like i was saying you guys we just put one under contract two days ago a hundred thousand dollars off list it was a five hundred thousand list property we got a hundred thousand off it and one percent over what she was offering right what she told us oh we'll do two percent no not gonna do two percent here's our offer best offer you're gonna get and they took it you guys so that is um you know really important to remind yourself that you are able now to be able to to grow your earnings like before it was much more challenging so love it love it dave we're jumping over to you because we actually had a couple questions in chat there one of them was talking about uh you know doing this process with you know big deals because you are the leader out there in park city one of the most expensive markets in the country tell us how this change has affected the buyers but also how is it affecting the seller side when you're getting offers on those properties you're muted too. We should know this. We've been panelists for years. Come on, guys. <laughs> this new wow. Zoom thing, it's really crazy, right? Yeah, this, <laughs> I just heard about this thing. It's all, it's all the craze. What's going on? Yeah, it's the new thing. So, um, ironically, uh, it... If you're selling high-end properties, you would think that there would be more compression of commissions or concessions, but in reality, it's actually the other way around. We're finding out um, for the vast majority of the people that we're working on the high or higher end, these are people that have sold, bought and sold many, many homes, right? And they just kind of know how it goes. And so we're not really having a challenge with them. In fact, where we're having more of a challenge, you know, so I'm in Park City, but we also do the Wasatch Front and the Wasatch Back, which is basically Salt Lake City to like the Heber, Midway, Camas Valleys. And what we found is it's the people, the sellers that have never sold before or sold once or twice. Um, I loved what um, Ross said. Um, well, and I won't reiterate, but basically here's, a, here's an idea. We sent an all cash full price offer and they countered back and, at 3% and the agent countered back that they, with, they accepted everything except they put 0% in the buyer side. And now we've written in the last 11 days, we've written 23 offers. We've gotten 20, we've got many more buyer agency agreements signed. And next week, we're going to, um, I'm going to bring on my coach and we're going to, um, we're going to have Debbie DeGroat. I think she's one of, I think she's the best coach ever. So she's going to be on this call and we're going to talk to everybody about um, how to do this. And I, I, I've heard this saying, showcase complexity and deliver simplicity. So what we're going to do is work because, you know, Ross, I mean, I'm going to, you're going to show me one, $2 million house and you're going to make $60,000. Right. But there's so many more things that we do. Right. I mean, there's pre-approvals and there's helping you get the right, the mortgage. And, and then there's the um, offer search process. And then there's the quiet sales. And then there's the properties that you can't see on Zillow, that you can only see through me with the Lawson Team Quiet Selling Off Market Program. And then there's an offer phase and there's a right and a wrong way to do an offer and there's a right and a wrong way to present the offer. And then there's the, what do we do um, after we have it under contract? So we're, I'm gonna share, so I'm not gonna talk about that so much today, but the one, <clears throat> but at the end of the day, um, they had a 2% on this property, um, and we ended up um, <clears throat> negotiating it up at two and a half. And, and, we, and the buyer said, you know what, I'll pay a half a percent, no problem, right? So the thing is, is you guys, you have to, you, you, you got to get in or out of your mind. 
if you think this is going to be a terrible thing, it's going to be. And if you think that this is going to be a great thing, it's going to be. It's like, you know, my favorite quote with Ford, you know, if you think, you know, if you think you can or think you can't, you're right, right? So <clears throat> I think at the end of the day, the agents that are going to learn how to do all of what we're all talking about are going to make much more money. And if you're in a market that is <clears throat> has had more compression, uh, I know Matt and some of the people in uh, in California, I mean, you know, it, it you don't see very many 3% BACs, right? Or there's different, and in Salt Lake City, for instance, there's so many that are at two and two and a half. And um, I think of all the contracts that we put together in the last 11 days since the 14th, and I think there's about seven or eight of them, um, I think there's only one, there's something that's under 2%. So, uh, so anyway, instead of me giving you all of that, we're going to save that for next week. And then there's going to be um, we're, and anybody that is on this call, if you want to invite people, I guarantee you that you will walk away next week with some ideas. And um, she's we're going to be giving out again um, a, the new um, $1,000 program to how to negotiate. The thing wow. is... To, yeah, we used to negotiate with listing agents. I mean, the listing agent negotiated with the seller on how much am I going to make and how much are we going to give the buyer, right? But what do we do now? We got to negotiate with our buyers and we got to negotiate with our buyers to get buyer agency signed. And we're, we'll talk a little bit about that next week too. We have to negotiate with the agent on the other side and if you want to get paid more, who wants to get paid more, right? Then all we have to do is get a little better at negotiating if you're working with buyers and you're going to make more money than you ever have. And the thing is, is if you, and, and I like what Ross said, you know, don't or, or do what is best for the client. You're not, I, I think you said, I'm not going to get my, let my, um, my fee get in the way of a deal, right, Ross? But, right. And, and we are using touring agreements as well, and we're doing a lot of that. But um, at the end of the day, um, if you can explain to the buyers what all the process of everything we do, we do so much for a client or a buyer, yes or yes, right? But if we don't tell everybody what we do, there's zero value. So we're going to share that. So any questions on that? Let me know. This is exciting. So next week, you guys, everybody that's here, we got almost 100 people in here right now. That is killer. Next week, that free with your coach. And listen, you guys, it's Dave Luxury Lawson here, right? This guy is selling hundreds of millions of dollars in real estate. He, they're coach for him. You're talking to the best in the country. That's exciting. We're going to have that next week and, and we'll dive into it even more. Um, and to I get found everybody on, so if, if you guys, this is, if you ever wanted to get somebody on this, and by the way, this is not the top producer mastermind group. What is this? What is this, man? Billion. It's the billion, the billion dollar, dollar mastermind group, yeah. right? I, I think we said, didn't we do a billion six last year, the people on these panels or a billion seven? I think so, yep. yeah. We yes. added it up a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so if we're, so we, so what you guys need to do is invite, like invite everybody on this call and say, you show up on this, you're going to get value. And at the end of the day, I'm going to give you a gift of a thousand dollars. Dude, I want a thousand right. bucks. That sounds good to me. <laughs> no, okay. that's great. That's great stuff. I'm looking forward to that next week. And that gift is going to be, I think it's going to change a lot of agents because it is negotiating is key right now. So that's Are you going to have, did you say you're going to have Debbie DeGroat on the call next week? Yeah. Wow. Everybody invite anybody that you care about because she's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm telling you guys, you she's need incredible. to David, put her name in the, David, put her name in the chat so everybody can see it. 
So if they want to look her up. Okay. One of the things too, I heard yeah. here was uh, earlier, we we're talking about being non-threatening to the clients or non-threatening to the buyers. Really what that's, you know, stating or kind of what, what that means, you guys, is that you're educating, right? We're coming from the side of education. You're, you're helping your clients understand what actually is going on and the benefits that they're going to be getting by signing this agreement with you. And there's actually, there is benefits, you guys, they have real representation. You're no longer, um, you know, working for the transaction, so to speak. And, and I believe that really can be beneficial for, for our experiences here. We, for the most part, right. For the most part, our clients fight for us. They want us to get paid fairly because we've explained how it works. We've sat down with them. A lot of that is actually done on our side or for our team here on a pre-listing buyer package or a pre-buyer package, not a pre-listing package, but a pre-buyer package. And we took the same theory, right, that we did with our listing packages and we just converted it so that when you first get in contact with someone, you send over that email and it has everything that you're providing all of those unique selling propositions which if you were listening to you know luxury dave lawson there right that's what he listed there is we do this and this and this and this and this and this and this those are his usps you guys that's his value so next week i'm very excited for that i'm going to definitely be here because i'm I, I learn every one of these panels so i um very excited about that now matt we're going to jump down to you because for let's talk about mm -hmm. luxury and, and listings and I want to be a little bit more on the listing side. You're welcome to jump into the buyer side, but I want to know how your sellers have been reacting to getting offers that are being offered, um, you know, whatever. Go from there. Yeah. You know, so first of all, yeah, that's a great question. So, um, and I love, I love calling it the billion dollar panel. Is that what we call it? I know it's not even, I'm not, you know, it looks like I'm sitting on a chair. I'm actually sitting on a stack of cash. I don't even use chairs in my house anymore. I just sit on money because I've, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyway, so, um, so the great thing about this, this, I can tell you from the listing side is the good news is that sellers, it's, it's not as much of a seller's market in most of the markets right now, I think. And I think that's going to continue. And, um, <clears throat> And so sellers want to sell their home. And so I don't think there's any reason when you, you know, I'm so amazed I get calls from agents saying, what is the seller paying out? And I always just say the seller's paying out whatever you negotiate. There's no number. I, I you know, they're going to pay out, they're willing to pay out something. But the bottom line is somebody said this earlier, I think it was Ross that, uh, you know, the seller, when a seller's got an offer in front of them, they don't really care about a half of a percent or 1%. And they really don't. They want to sell their house. And so a big part of getting offers accepted and getting whatever you're trying to get, whether it's 3% or 4% or 2.5% or whatever, is definitely from the buyer side is, is educating that listing agent. Because one of our agents was making an offer like literally the day that everything changed. I guess it was the 15th or the 17th or whatever. And we submitted a great offer, um, a little bit, you know, not full price, but close to a house that had been on the market for three or four months. And the listing agent who just didn't really know what, what he was doing, in my opinion, you know, I'm sure he had a conversation with his seller and the seller said, well, I thought we don't have to pay out a commission anymore. And, uh, and, the, and he said, no, yeah, you don't. I'm, I'm guessing he said, no, you don't. Okay. Well then I, I think I would like to pay out 1%, but we got a counter offer of 1%. And so it's very important to educate that the seller's agent and say, look, I'm sending you an offer. You should always talk to the listing agent before you submit an offer anyway, yes. even without, without regard to this, because the listing agent will tell you everything you need to know because the listing agent wants to sell the house. Right. So do the, you know, do the sellers want to rent back Do the sellers, uh, want to include any furniture? Do that, you know, how, how fast quickly can they close? What's important to them, et cetera. But then you have to have the conversation say, look, I'm going to send you a great offer. I know, you know, however long you've been on the market, but I'm sending you a great offer. Do you have any offers on the table? No. Um, and it's going to be with a 3% a request for a 3% or whatever percent concession. And, and you have to educate on how that listing agent on how he needs to present that to his seller right which is basically that you know 
basically we are asking you to incorporate this concession into the deal, right? I don't, I don't really want to negotiate concessions with you. I want to negotiate and get this deal done. Um, and so, you know, basically because a lot of sellers will say, well, I don't have to pay that. And, uh, the buyer can pay it. Well, the buyers are paying it because they're the ones bringing in the money to make the deal happen. But the buyers don't want to pay out of pocket for it. They want to basically finance it like buyers have done for the last 40 or 50 years in real estate in the United States. So don't, you know, they do not want to pay out of pocket for to pay the, that's why they're asking for a concession. And so you just have to educate. It's really, really important to educate the listing agent because we're early on in this situation. Right. So um, I just I think that's an important part of it. But I'll tell you, from the listing side, it makes it makes I think it makes taking listings much easier. And it's you just say, look, when buyers make an offer, because the sellers love the fact that theoretically they don't have to pay a concession out to, a, to they don't have to pay a commission to a buyer's agent. I've had multiple sellers say to me, well, that's the way it should be. Right. I shouldn't have to pay their commission. OK, fine. Well, just so you know, when they when we get an offer, they're going to ask for, uh, you know, they're going to ask for something, and and it, we'll just negotiate it when it comes in. Great. So this has been we're all, buyers are going to be much more in control moving forward, buyers agents rather, and buyers um, partially I think because we're going to be in a buyer's market, but uh, forget about you know remember before we had to just take whatever was offered on the MLS. Now we can negotiate it on every deal. And when a seller has an offer in front of them, they want to sell their house and they are not going to lose a deal over a half of a percent or one or even 1%. And I don't care what price range you're in. So this has been, you know, I, I remember the day I was driving to an appointment the day that I heard about this settlement, you know, and I remember at the, that day, I was actually talking with my sister who's an agent on the East coast. And uh, we were both, my sister's like, I might as well just get out of the business. This is just horrible. <laughs> and I kind of thought it'd be horrible too, but now it's the best thing that ever happened. So there you go. I think so that's, I know we're short on time, so I'll turn over. Yeah, no, it's great. And, and you're right. It's the best thing I believe that's ever happened for buyer's agents. I think it can definitely be a little more challenging for listing agents. I want to have one follow up there with you, Matt, for the, for the sellers that say, well, I'm just not going to pay anything, Right. When have you hey, had any experiences when the offers no. come in, they ask for concessions, have they just turned them down completely? Cause I think that's a fear a lot of people are having or are they working? No, but, with it, but if I, if they did, you know, if I was on, I mean, I, let's just say, let me turn it around. So no, I haven't had that happen. It could, okay. it, I'm sure it will happen at some point, but if I was on the buy side, you know, let me tell you something to buyer's agent, you can, you know, your people think, and I, I think buyer's agents have the feeling that, okay, we make an offer, we ask for whatever. Three, let's just say, call it 3% as a number. We get a response back and it's, uh, you know, no, maybe it's, we're, it's only zero or it's 1%. And this is the price. You should not be shy about, you're not, you're not going to go up in price, but you can counter back and say, no, it's 3%, right? You can go back and forth not changing the price, but asking for your 3% or your 2.5% or whatever the number is. And, you know, again, when a seller has an offer in front of them and they want to sell their house, they're going to be motivated. So I don't think that's going to happen very often, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I really don't. So well, I wouldn't be concerned about that from the buy side. And as things go, you guys, I think more and more people are going to get used to concessions instead of co-broken. It will just become the norm. But I'm on agreement there with you 100%. Talk with the agent before writing your offer so that you can structure the offer the way the seller wants it. Then when you do have that concession, when you ask for a little bit more, they're still getting the things they want. That, that's great. Telling the selling or the listing agent to incorporate it in their counter offers, because in my experience, I don't write many offers that get just outright accepted. I'm an aggressive agent. I'll, I'm always going to fight for my buyers, right? So I'm always expecting a counter offer back. And when I, when I reach out to them and I say, hey, with, with your counter, make sure that that 3% is incorporated with the price that your seller will accept. Yeah. And, right? you, you know, Cam, you, the, another thing I wanted to mention, I forgot to say, is that uh, the other thing you have to do when you talk to that listing agent is say, you incorporate it. But let me tell you something. We offered, you know, 850. 
I don't know how higher, if at all, my buyer is going to go. So don't try to just tack 3% onto 850 because I have a feeling, you know, you got to temper, right? It's not just tacking on 3% to whatever purchase price because the buy- I've seen buyers walk because they say they see what they did. They just added 3% to the, to what we offered. Forget it. I'm not paying that. So, yeah. you know, you have, again, it's all, it's really about educating that listing agent. Very important. Well, yeah. And it's like, do you, do you want to accept this now that you've been on the market for a hundred days or do you want to wait another 30 days and get 2% less on the purchase price with the same concession offer? Like, yeah. do you, do you want to get this done now? And I'm so thankful that this is happening in this buyer side market. If this change happened right during COVID when <laughs> Like, you know, there's 50 offers on each property going 800,000 above list price. Like what a, what a nightmare. So if we're in this slower paced market where buyers are in control, I'm so thankful that we're acclimating into this and you can empower your buyers by telling them this is your market to shine. This is your, your market. So let's stick to our guns. We're transparent on what fee we're asking for. And that's okay to counter back and forth on until we get the deal that you like. I love it. I love it. That's just great stuff. This is this is the stuff that for everyone watching, if you're incorporating into your business, I promise you is going to allow you to start getting more offers accepted, getting more commissions. Um, one of the classes I taught here a few years ago, I got a text from an agent saying, I did everything you said for one year and it made me $40,000 in extra commissions by getting like that extra half a percent. Guys, you got to fight for it. So... Uh, Jana, I seen that you were on earlier. I would love your input. Obviously, you you manage and you run a rock star team in multiple states. Uh, one of the the luxury founders here. Are you are you on it? Would you like to chime in for a minute? I know this is a treat. We got Janet Caudill on here. This is okay. an unusual rock star. My hero. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually just under the radar listening to all the wisdom and grabbing your um, showing tour touring agreements. I've not heard of that, so. Um, I, all I, right now, what we're doing is we're just having the buyer consultations, bringing them in and we do, um, a little dating thing. I guess that would be your touring agreement. So we'll do a, we'll allow about three dates before we get married. Um, but other than that, we're going for just getting married to them and showing them the value and, and locking them in. So, um, just a lot of training wrapped around with all the buyer agents on, on all of this and, um, on as many Zooms and everything like this, just to continue to learn and, and roll with it and level up our skills. We're doing a lot of skill development right now, big time, right? Scripts, dialogues, and getting everyone comfortable. So yeah, I don't know that I have much to share. You guys are rock stars. And um, I'm going to start attending these on a, I have it. I have my schedule now where I'm allowed to get on these. Um, so, and it's in my calendar. So you'll see more of me. We're excited. Hey, Jana, can so I valuable. ask you a quick question, Jenna, yeah. about the market? So Cam was saying you're in Naples, right? Mm-hmm. Part of the time. So, uh, I mean, I know you've got a team in Indiana too, but it, do you see the market in Naples? Would you say prices are down? How much would you say prices are down? It depends on, from the um, peak? it depends on the area, right? Cam, like, um, so I'll just, I, mean, I know what he's I asking. Mean, I said about 20, 25% in Cape Coral, Fort Myers up in Lee County. And that's right. probably on maybe I, the little more aggressive side, but we're seeing a big decline. So I right. think that's what I he would, was asking. I would see, I would say around that too. Marco Island, Naples, Benita. Um, I would, yeah, I, I have not done the exact numbers because some of the areas are a little different than, you know, others, but yeah, we're, we're see it's overcorrecting for sure. Um, we're going back to, I would say 2019, 2020 prices. Mm-hmm. so yeah we're, we're, we're at least from my analytics that uh, i've looked at a lot of the numbers that the graph is just about to hit where we were in 2019 mm-hmm. right before we had the little drop off before COVID hit so we had 2019 pump and then it like slowed down and died it seemed like for a few months and then for us it just took off better. so yeah. yeah that's that's at least what i'm seeing um but that's a good thing i think like for especially because like ross was saying for um, this change in sellers' mindsets to understand what we can do f- with them and the concessions and all that. If people had 50 offers, it would be it'd be a lot different. So um, I think it's a great time. It's a great opportunity. Uh, one thing 
I did want to say before I know I know uh, Craig, you had some fun you want to do in the last few minutes because I love doing that. It really connects all our viewers, <laughs> and I, I just love doing that. So I, I want to jump into that. One thing though, I want to kind of point out for everyone if you're not doing it already is to have your value propositions written down somewhere and review them, you guys. Agents, you have to be studying. You have to be learning. Like Jana just said, her team is doing huge, huge advantage. Get your elevator pitch down. You need to be able to, in 30 seconds, when you meet someone, explain to them why they'd ever want to hire you. And it's like, you heard, you heard, um, Dave kind of go through it there, you know, loss and luxury loss. And he kind of just went bang, 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 bang. This is what we do. And it's hard to compete against that when you have that down and you have your value proposition down. So take a few minutes, you guys. It's going to get you a foot ahead every time someone asks, well, why would we? Why should we? Well, this is why. And, this is why. And I'm there are some, and you know, everybody talks about USPs, I think more for sellers. But there are some great buyer USPs that you can totally use. Um, you know, one of the ones that I that I love that's a great one is you know you you have a money back guarantee when you buy a home through us. Well, if you don't absolutely love the house within six months, uh, you let us know. I have I have had people take me up on that, by the way. Um, <laughs> But it's no big deal. You get a listing, you, you sell it for free. It's no big deal, right? You pick up other listings and buyers and whatever. But, you know, there's so many, many different buyers, buyer USPs, just like there are seller USPs. And remember, you set the terms for whatever USP you're using. So you don't need to be afraid of, you know, oh, God, the USP, what if, what if I have to actually do this or do that? You set the terms, yeah. you know, it's... The, the the granddaddy of them all is to know your your home sold guaranteed or I'll buy it myself or you know but remember you set the terms for all of those things so yep. there are a lot of good buyer USPs that's all I wanted to mention you know you guarantee you're going to save them X amount when they buy a home from from you or you'll you know you'll pay their closing costs or you'll credit their you know credit them X amount of dollars at closing or you know those are all great ones absolutely Gary go ahead. Did you have something there? Quick question. Uh, Ross, thank you for sharing your touring agreement with us. The question on that is just like, uh, what's it called? The copyright being from Zillow. Is that something that anybody can use or is that literally limited to agents that are like within your position using uh, using Zillow or working with Zillow for lead generation? Uh, I don't think it's uh, limited. I know the copyright's on there because Zillow <laughs> developed it, but um, I'm pretty sure that's going to be compliant in California across the board. You can copy paste and put it on your own deal. Um, and then you take the liability there. So <laughs> I don't think that ver verbiage is, is a problem. I think that's, that's a great thing. If you don't like the Zillow on the bottom of it, and then you can rock and roll with something else. Dave, you developed yours based on that, right? And you just made, made it your own. Yeah. So we modified it. So Gary, look at the one that I put in the chat and um, see if you can, um, if, if that helps you, but yeah, you know, the thing I love about EXP is EXP is giving all of the stuff they've developed to everybody, no matter what brokerage and with Zillow, Zillow wants to take care of agents and protect them. I, I can't imagine that you can't use that. So I love that they collaborate as well. Yep. Yeah. I, I've yeah. not been told that we can't use it. Yeah. it. It's, it's universal, but if you want to make it your own, cause Zillow's the bad guy, I like to embrace the bad guys. No, I mean, uh, I'm, they, I'm asking they, just they from like a, bit. I'm asking just from like a legal standpoint, like, are, are they going to come after you? Like, you don't have the licensing agreement to use this if it turns, I mean, I don't know, I guess because yeah. we're talking to a lot of other people, check your P's and Q's before using, the, you yeah. know, these things. Again, I, I, I love it. I, like I said, I just wanted to ask that, that question, but um, yeah, what, what you can take to the bank is that's compliant in California. Uh, like uh, just before we hop in the fun stuff with Lurch. Uh, they, they're unable to launch it automatically right now because they had some hiccups in California on their first rendition. So this is the final proof and this is going out to public. And by the way, Jana, thanks for sharing that you're building skills with your agents. How, how important is that? Because nobody on this panel rolls out of bed and knows exactly what to say to their clients. Like I know Dave and, and Matt, like everyone is role-playing like crazy on my team. We're doing it twice a week. We were doing it 
a month and a half before this rolled out. We started in July. So it wasn't scary. Like it's scary if you waited till August 17th to go out and have your first time talking about this with a live client, like use your team, use somebody in your office, go role play, build your skills. It's a great way that Jana put it, build your skills so you can go out and excel. Yeah. That's it. The term either it's your reputation or your preparation. Hmm. That's, hopefully that's, you have that's, that's a good one. That's there was, huge. There was a great mentor that Jan and I had had, and we had a chance to, and a dear friend, Howard Britton, he had a great line all the time. It says, get out of judgment, live in curiosity. This is a time of curiosity. This is a time of learning. Stop saying there's a lot of people that got blinders on right now. They're in so much judgment. Just live in curiosity. Do what you're doing, but be open-minded. And you're going to expand so much more because you're going to, first of all, shake off all the stress. And once you do that, we're going to have some fun, right, Janet? That's one of the things he always says. Live in curiosity and you're going to go like a hockey stick in growth. So, so I right, I get over get over right. this so here's the question of the day. In I don't know whether you all eat them or not, but it is the holiday weekend. It is Labor Day. Everybody usually grills. I don't know. We grill in Philly. We do sausage. We do this, this. But everybody typically loves a burger. Do you like cheeseburgers or burgers? And if you have a cheeseburger, what's the cheese you put on the burger? We're going to start with Janet because I know she's in Florida. She's probably doing lobster tail burgers. Well, well. actually, I'm in Indiana. I flew here last night, so I'm back in Indiana. Um, I would say pepper jack. Give it a little spice. You are spicy. You're the, you're <laughs> the spicy. Uh, the, was it the, the the you're the spicy girl of the spice girls? All right, Dave Lawson up there in Colorado. What are you doing? Um, pepper Jack for me as well. All right, so we got two Pepper Jack. All right, let's go down here to Ross. I'm grilling on the sidewalk out here in Palm Springs, so uh, <laughs> I don't know how sanitary that is, but you can definitely grill on the sidewalk. And uh, I'm I'm putting on uh, all, like three kinds of cheese, right? We got the the cheddar, we got the Pepper Jack, and then uh, I guess it's just two. I don't know why I said three. I got nervous. I'm sorry. <laughs> But I, I mostly cheddar cheese in my house, and, and my kids don't like cheese on their burgers. They just like ketchup sandwiches. So that's normally what we're we're rolling with, just for low, low ingredients. All right, you went big. You went with two. All right, let's go with Mr. Massa up there. Don't tell me tequila cheese. No, no, that's on the <laughs> side. Um, no, uh, usually I do like a uh, like blue cheese infused burger. I like to put the blue cheese inside of the patty, let it all kind of melt out, and then dress it up from there. Ooh, you grind bacon wow. and put them in there too. What's that? You put bacon in the burger too? I do. And also I've used some fig, like fig and blue cheese inside the burger. Like that's some good stuff right there. Next level. Wow. Right. <laughs> Let's go to Mr. Batiata. What are you doing? Gee whiz. Well, I would say that sounds amazing. I really like putting a lot of um, like, you know, like tomatoes and onions and, and banana peppers, right? Banana peppers are really, really good. Uh, but I, I would say I'm I'm a uh, pepper jack too, or cheddar, you cheddar, you there know, you or blue cheese like Gary said. Man, this is a tough. I want to go to Gary's house. To get some but I want to know. I want to learn. I want to know. What, I want to know what your. I want to know what's on the menu at your house. Hold on, Cam. What's Cam this weekend? <laughs> Unmute. I want to hear what's on Craig's list too. I, you know, has anyone done those beer can tacos? They're all over social media where people are putting the beer can in and they're stuffing them. I, I want to try one of those yet. But I, uh, we just got, we just did uh, hamburgers and we used a uh, habanero cheese. It's like pepper jack, just a little bit, a little more kick. It was fire, literally. It was mm. delicious. So I'd say that the the, the uh, habanero cheese for that one. There you go. Yeah, right, so I'm, I'm basic. I'm either the the orange American or Swiss cheese. One of the two depending on which way I feel like going. So um, you guys all want to know what I'm doing? You all sitting yes. down? Yeah. Yes. I'll be honest with you? Zero. Zero? What? Zero. Zero. I, I am getting ready for a big golf tournament next week. It's uh, Thursday through Saturday. So I'm going to be chipping, putting, and sand shooting so I don't let my team down. So um, I'll probably be at the club <laughs> eating <laughs> some steaks or something like that, if anything else. But <laughs> my whole world is I am a bachelor all weekend. <laughs> Other than taking care of uh, Brandy and uh, Brandy and uh, Brooklyn, who are my golden doodles, so <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Hey, you Sorry guys! I just want to say yeah. we're right out here at the hour. I don't want to. I want to keep uh, you know conscious of everyone's time. But make sure next week you invite 
everybody. Doesn't matter what brokerage they're with. It is going to be incredible. You're getting a thousand dollar gift, you guys, for free. Just come, yeah. just join. You're gonna learn. Debbie DeGroote's gonna be here, just sharing some incredible wisdom. Very, very excited about that. So make sure you invite everybody that you know. Dave, did you have one thing you wanted to say before we uh, head off? Um, the thing is, just invite people and say, "Hey, this is billion dollar mastermind." And I, I, the way I explain it is, I say, I before I was on this mastermind, I used to think I knew a lot. Now I don't, but I learn every day. What I learn from this group every single day helps me in my business every single week. So use that. And um, I guarantee you're going to love this. I love it. We've been working on this for two months, by the way, when this was announced. So mm. David's goal wow. is to give away $200,000 worth of advice yeah. in these videos. That's 200 people at $1,000 each. So that's David's goal is they'll give away at least $200,000 in generosity. So let's try to get 200 people on here. Yeah. Let's get it. Yeah. Let's hey, it. Dave, by the and, way, and, before and, we go, do you know your own? If you guys, as agents, you can, once you get this link, then you can give a thousand dollar gift to anybody in the business as well. And then it's your gift to them. All right. Awesome. All right. Signing off. All right, guys. Let's have guys. A great Thank week. You. Make a difference. Be safe everyone this weekend. Have a great Labor Day. See you guys next Cheers. week. See ya. Bye guys.